And there they go, leaving now from Community of Christ Church and Independence on Walnut Street, making their way past through Independence, past the Independence Police Department next, where we saw not only the memorial outside the department and the police cruiser and flowers and so many memories left by community members. Community members already gathered there. Also, the Evergy line trucks parked in line to honor him with an American flag hanging below. There it is right there because he left police work briefly to try the private sector to work as a lineman uh, and and clearly, clearly touched people there when he was there because they've shown up today. Yeah, a beautiful show of support on the part of Evergy there. Uh, the symbolism there as we're watching and we've been periodically putting up Officer Allen's picture as well and you see that big smile and that's something we heard time and time again yes. today. What a what a great smile he had that he would sometimes laugh with an infectious giggle that he would excitedly wave people across the parking lot and, and have them come over so he could show them videos of his two children, whether it was his daughter taking her first steps or whether it was his son uh, riding his bike and, and they talked about what an adventurer he was himself that even from a young age, he was fearless, he was brave, um, he loved mountain biking, he loved camping. And, and so getting a glimpse into the person behind the badge, um, it was an honor to kind of get to hear that from, from those who knew him and loved him today. And would never hesitate to run into danger, which is exactly what he was doing, offering aid to someone who had just been shot, Drexel Mack, who was also killed, who had been shot, running to help him. No one had any doubt that that's exactly what he would do if he was needed. Scott, as you're watching all of this and we talk about the impact this has on a department, you can see this from from two different sides, uh, certainly both you're losing your son and how that impacted his department, but you yourself served as a police officer. Um, how important is it to take care of officers mental health when they go through something like this? I think it's uh, it needs to be not just looked at, but to be carried through. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that the officer first on the scene for my son uh, sought out help and it mm. helped him dramatically. You're affected whether you were there or not because of the danger of the job and it could happen to you and it's a very real feeling that it can happen to you and even though it's not dwelled on every day when you go to work, uh, when it does happen it kind of brings the human side of you out and I think that it is very bothersome. Uh, one of the things that uh, is done nationally is the COPS program, Citizens of Police Survivors. And they do every year, they bring the honored families of uh, lost officers together in Washington, D.C. And that's something that I would hope the Cody Allen family will go to. It's paid for by uh, the COPS organization. Uh, that was probably the most honored, honorable thing that anybody could ever do when they put your son's name on the National Memorial mm. and your, your son or loved one's picture is hanging in the law enforcement museum and everything that they did and they offer counselors and education and uh, the honor, I mean, they lead you everywhere you go with a procession uh, and officers from that department go there and spend time with the family and there for your every need. Mm -hmm. uh, it really kind of uh, tells you just how valued your loved one was. And it's something that I'm sure that these families will go to. They will pick officers to go with them and uh, honor them as well. And my granddaughter and I and my son went. Uh, my son had to leave home because of a medical emergency at home, but my granddaughter and I spent a week together just, mm -hmm. you know, going to the different things and uh, being honored as the family of the fallen. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's one way that uh, you can continue the remembrance. And Scott, I, one reason we're so grateful for your perspective on a day like this, I, I can imagine being near those families who understand. And right now we're watching the beginning of that procession approach the Independence Police Department, driving underneath those Evergy trucks with the American flag. Let's get to uh, Charlie Keegan along the route too. Charlie, you're on Lee Summit Road, right? Yeah, I'm a little farther along the procession route there, Lindsay, and we are already seeing people start to line the procession route kind of in all uh, all along the route. Uh, people who who have met Officer Cody Allen, people who have never met him. 
people who say this is kind of like a patriotic duty. That's why one person described it to me as this is just the patriot thing to do is to come out here to show your support, bring the American flag, uh, you know, support this family as they drive by and all of the law enforcement family that's a part of this procession as well. We've seen adults, we've seen children, those children are holding signs in different parts throughout the procession, you know, adults that are uh, first responders, adults who are community members. Uh, I spoke to two women who have met Officer Cody Allen through uh, various uh, circumstances and were always so impressed with his professionalism and they just decided they had to be here today to make sure that uh, to show their support to kind of give him one final goodbye as he comes through here in this processional route. So this is something that is bringing out a lot of people from lots of different walks of life, but who have that one kind of common uh, thread there that they want to show support for law enforcement and these times here in Independence, Missouri and across the United States. And so we are, of course, going to be keeping a close eye on this procession as it makes its way throughout the entire route over to Odessa. But we want to yeah, make sure that we're paying that respect to right there in downtown uptown independence uh, so that's kind of what i'm seeing farther along the route charlie thank you what we're seeing now is is reminiscent of what we saw the day he died remember there was a profession as they escorted his body back to the medical examiner's office and so when something like this happens in the line of duty you do see the law enforcement community come together members of other departments who volunteer their services to make sure that they are standing watch both for the officer who has passed and for the family. And we've heard from Scott Mosier just what a comfort that is to the family members who are grieving during that time of need. How powerful to see so many just mm -hmm. even just even in this moment. And still the procession leaving from Community of Christ Church in Independence. I was just looking. It's about 30 miles hmm. from where they are in Independence to the Odessa Cemetery where they are making their way right now, just starting in the last few minutes after a service um, that was about two hours long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we heard from family. We heard from friends. We heard from fellow officers. And you're watching uh, many of those law enforcement vehicles right now as they're traveling along the procession route. Um, you heard Charlie mentioning that some of the people who came out either had interactions with Officer Allen and knew him or they didn't know him at all, but they felt that it was their patriotic duty to come out and to recognize his service. And and again, if you're just joining us, Scott Mosier, uh, father of Mike Mosier, fallen officer from, from Overland Park, shared that, yes, that does make a difference for grieving family members to see that show of support along the side. So again, please, Lindsay just mentioned that's a 30 minute or a 30 mile uh, parade or procession route, excuse me. Um, so you have time. If you are watching, you have time to go out to line the road there. Look at that on the side of the road there. You can see people standing there, some of them with flags and just showing their support. We see hats off. We see hands on hearts just to be there for the law enforcement family, for the family of the officer as well. And sometimes we just have to take a second to take this all in. It's a somber show of support. Um, beautiful to see the community coming out to support the department and the family, but sad. And it, it's not lost on us how many of these funerals we have carried live here on our air for you in recent years. Um, as I mentioned, we have this today and on Monday we'll be carrying um, a ceremony live for the process server, Drexel Mack, who was also killed. Um, and as Lindsay, as Lindsay has mentioned, we do have um, reporters all along this parade route, so we can show you this in real time as it's happening. Let's talk to Claire Bradshaw. She's been there uh, since this morning covering this for us. Claire, where are you and what are you seeing? Hey, you guys, I'm actually just right by our camera. We're going to keep this pointed on the procession. I could not put into perspective how many law enforcement departments came out today to support and honor uh, Cody Allen and his family. We, I've seen departments as far as Council Bluffs, Iowa. There are um, law enforcement officers from Boston and New York City. It's their job to travel around the country and come to funerals of fallen officers. And they're just now wrapping up, but it was a sight to see it, all of these cars lined up. It, one thing that stuck out with me, and I know we've talked about it throughout our show this morning, is that Officer Allen was a father, he was a husband, he was a son, but he was also somebody who you wanted to have your back. That's what you heard from both of his friends and his coworkers. He was the person you wanted to respond if you needed help. And that's exactly what he did in his final moments. And his service that really stuck out to me a lot of times I feel we forget that the men and women in uniform, they're humans as well. And that's what really happened today is we personified Officer Cody Allen. So what we're seeing right now 
Riley County Police just passing by. We've got Cole County, KCPD, KCKPD, Sugar Creek. I saw law enforcement from Sweet Springs, Missouri. And if you've ever been to Sweet Springs, it's a very small town. So even sending one officer today, that really speaks on how important it is for them to rally behind the Independence Police Department. So I'm just going to give a moment, stop talking and let you kind of soak this moment in as they finish up sending out the final cars. Back to you guys. Claire, thank you. Just taking a moment of silence to, to soak in some of what you shared. Did you catch Claire mentioning there Boston, New York City, Council Bluffs, Iowa, that that departments from out of state showing up to pay their respects to, to one of their own. And, and again, we, we talk about this time and time again in these instances, what a tight knit community the law enforcement community is. We also heard today recognition of firefighters and EMS. Remember, uh, when it comes to first responders, uh, you know, they too were there that day and they, they saw horrible things that day and they also reacted and, and behaved uh, heroically. Um, remember, we had two other independence officers who were also shot and who were wounded, who have since been released from the hospital and are, are believed to be making full recoveries, at least physically. Um, and so we had other first responders who, who were traumatized that day as well. And Claire, just talking about the number of law enforcement, I mean, you're seeing two live looks right now. There are so many members of law enforcement there that we've been watching law enforcement cars drive in front of the Independence Police Department while we're still watching them mm -hmm. pass by the hearse that is a yet to leave Community of Christ Church and in Independence and every single car that drives by. I keep trying to read the uh, mm -hmm. agency on the side and it seems to be there's KCPD. It seems to be a, a different agency every few cars that we see people coming from all over the country to show their support. Yeah, I don't know if anyone in back in our uh, in our in the control room right now, what time did this actually start? Because we have been watching this procession for at least 15 minutes. And again, the cars just keep coming. That's incredible how many um, different crews have responded here, as Lindsay mentioned. Um, and it's just a sea and a quick Look traffic flag if you're too. home and you need to go somewhere, um, you will want to avoid this route because this is a long, um, a long procession here um, and, and countless, countless uh, law enforcement cars that are here uh, as well.